Welcome to another maths lesson. In this lesson, what we're going to focus on is factorization by using the distributive law, right? Now, just a look at the distributive law. If we have x times a plus b in a bracket, then the distributive law states that we should use the term on the outside to multiply each term on the inside. So that would equal to x times a plus x times b, which would simplify to give us ax plus bx. Now, when we are factorizing using the distributive law, we are doing the reverse. So here, as you can see, we have ax plus b, and we want to factorize ax plus b. What is common to both terms is x. So we will take out the common term, right? And then use the common term to divide each term that was originally given to get the term inside of the bracket, right? So if you take ax to divide by x, x divided by x would give you one and one times a would give you a. So you put a right here. And if you take bx divided by x, x divided by x would give you one and one times b would be, give you b. So you put b in the bracket. And this would be the, fa the factors. So x would be one factor and a plus b would be another factor. To fully understand this concept, what we're going to do, we're going to look at some examples. And by working out some examples, at the end, you will have a better understanding, all right? So let's look at the first example here. We're given 5a plus 5b to factorize. The first thing that we're going to look on is the numbers. What is the highest common factor of five? Here, it would be five because five is common to both terms. So we're going to take that out. And then we're going to open a bracket. Now, when you look at the letter, we have A and we have B, there's nothing common between them. So we're going to use this five to divide each term and the result that we get, we're going to write it inside of the bracket. So if you have 5a here divided by five, clearly five divided by five will give us one and one times a will just leave us back with a. So this a, you're going to place it in the bracket, put back a plus sign. And we're going to do the same thing with the second term we're going to take 5b and divide it by the common factor, which is 5. And 5 uh, into 5 gives us 1, so the answer is just b. So we'll put all b here. And we are finished. So when we factorize this expression, which is 5a plus 5b, the factors would be 5 and a plus b. All right? Let's look at this one. We have m squared minus m. What is the common factor between these two terms? m would be the common factor, right? Now, how do we get the term inside of a bracket? We're going to take m squared to divide by the common factor. But note, m squared means m times m. So I'm going to write it this way. So we're taking m squared to divide m. Clearly here, you would notice that m in the denominator will take out one m in the numerator. So the result that we have is just m. So in the, here in the bracket, we're going to put m. And then the second term, which is m divided by m, that is just going to give us one. So here, we'll put one. So therefore, when we factorize m squared minus m, our answer would be m times m minus one. So let's look at the third example. We have four p, we have minus 20. What is the common factor? Uh, the highest common factor between four and 20. That would just be four. So we're going to write our four here and open a bracket. How do we get the term inside of the bracket? We're going to use the common factor to divide each term in the original problem. So it's going to be 4p 
divided by four, clearly here. Four into four will give us one and one times P will just leave us back with P. So right here, we put P. And then we'd have 20 divided by four, and that is just going to give us five. So five would go here and we're finished. All right, now for example four, we have minus three X minus six X Y. So when we look at the numbers, what is the common factor between three and six? The highest common factor, that would be three, right? So we put three here. Then we look at the letters. We have X in the first term and we have X in the second term. That means X is common to both terms. So the highest common factor for these two terms would be three X because we only have one Y here. So we need to open a bracket. And by now, you must get the gist how we get the term inside of a bracket. We're going to take our common factor to divide each term up here. So if we have a negative 3x divided by a positive 3x here, clearly here, 3x into 3x would give us 1, and 3x into negative 3x would just give us negative 1. So inside of the bracket, we're going to put negative one. And here, what we have is six X Y divided by three X. Clearly here, X in the numerator will cancel X in the denominator. Three in the denominator can go into three one time and three can go into six two times. So what you left back with is just two times Y, which is just two Y. So here you would put two Y and you're finished for this one. For number five, the only difference is that we're now given three terms where the concept does not change. So we're going to look at the numbers. We have five in the first term, 10 in the second term and 15 in the third term. What is the highest common factors between those three numbers? That would be five. Then we're going to look at the letters. We have W in the first term, W in the second term, and W in the third term. That is common to all three terms. So we're going to write it here. We have P here, Q, and R. Those are not common. So the common factor for this, the highest common factor for this expression would be 5W. Then we're going to open a bracket. Then to get the term inside of the bracket, we're going to use our highest common factor to divide each individual term. So it would be five W P divided by five W. W will cancel out W and five will cancel out five. So what we're left back with here is just P. So we'll put that P right here, put back our plus sign. Then we're going to do the second, same thing to the second term. So we have 10 W Q divided by five W. Clearly you can see that W will take out W. Five into five would be one, and five into 10 would give you two, and two times Q would just give you two Q. So therefore write two Q here. Put back our subtraction, and then would have 15 W R all divided by five W. Here, W will take out W, five into five will give us one, and five into 15 will give us three, and three times R would just give us three R. So therefore, we write three R here and close our bracket, and that's it. So that's how you would factorize number five. So to question number six, we have negative six RX minus 36 RY plus 18RZ. So again, we're going to look at the numbers and we're going to write down the highest common factor. So the highest common factor of 6, 36, and 18 would be 6. Then we look at the letters. We have R in the first term here. We have R in the second term, and we also have R in the ter third term. So that means R is common to all three terms. So we're going to write it here. 
know that we only have one X, we only have one Y, and we only have one Z. So therefore, the highest common factor of each of these terms would be 6R. And then all you need to do is to open a bracket, and then you are going to use this 6R to divide each term in the original problem and write the result inside of the bracket and you're finished. So if we have minus 6RX divided by 6R, then clearly here R will cancel out R. 6 into 6 would be 1 and 6 into negative 6 would be negative 1. And negative 1 times X would just give us negative 1X or just negative X. So here inside of the bracket, we're going to put negative X there. All right, put back our minus here. Then we're going to take this 36. So it's going to be 36 RY. I'm going to divide that by the common factor, which is a 6R. Clear, clearly here, R will cancel out R. 6 into 6 will give you 1. 6 into 36 would be 6. And 6 times Y would just give us 6Y. So we'll put our 6y here. And then we'll do the same thing for the last term, which is just 18 rz all over 6r. So here r will cancel out r. 6 into 6 goes 1, and 6 into 18 gives us 3, and 3 times z, that is going to give us 3z. So here we'll put back our plus sign and put back our 3z. And that's it, we're finished with this one. For the last one now, again, we look at numbers. We have three RS, we have nine RT, and we have 18 RU. So what is the highest common factor? For three, nine, and 18, that would be three in this case. Then we look at the letters, we note that R is common to all three terms. So we're going to take that out. We don't have anything that is common. So 3R is the highest common factor for each of these terms. I'm going to open a bracket. I'm going to use this 3R to divide each term. So it would be 3RS divided by 3R. So R will cancel out R. And 3 will cancel out 3. So what we're left back with is just S. So put S here. Put back our plus sign then it would be 9RT all over 3RS, sorry, 3R. So clearly here, R will cancel out R, 3 into 3, 1, 3 into 9 gives us 3, and 3 times T would give us 3T, right? So put the 3T here. And there should be a plus sign here, sorry. So put that uh, plus sign here. And then it's going to be 18 RU all over 3R. So again, R will cancel out R. 3 into 3 will give us 1. 3 into 18 will give us 6. And 6 times U, that will give us 6U. So it would be plus six U. And that's it. That's how you factorize using the distributive law. Thank you very much for watching and do enjoy the rest of your day.